Hi, I'm David Maldo, here to give you a quick look at the new Poly Studio P15. In fact, I have one right here, ready to go, so let's do a quick unboxing. And here it is. So as you can see, we have a camera in the front, speaker, three microphones, and on the bottom we have our connectors, which we'll go into more detail in a minute. The first thing I want to point out is that it's light. This looks like those old speaker bar systems we'd have under the monitor, and while you, you can install it under the monitor, it's designed to go above the monitor. So I was worried it might tip it over if it was heavy, but it is very, very light. Now obviously the most important thing is the performance. So I'm recording this video on a P15. You're hearing me and seeing me on a Poly P15 right now. I am using a virtual background. This is just how I normally do video calls, so what I would be using the camera for is to capture me with my virtual background. But just to show you everything, let me turn it off for a second. Okay, so here we have my green screen with all of its wrinkled glory, and, and you can see now all the hair management issues, but this is the raw Poly 15 camera's image. Okay, so let me get my virtual office back. Now I'm about a little more than about arm lengths away from the microphone, so you can judge for yourself how I sound. As far as its speaker, you'll have to take my word for it, but it sounds exactly as I expected. It's definitely an improvement over a laptop audio, much easier to make out what people are saying to you. Of course, it's not as powerful as my three-piece surround sound system with a separate subwoofer, but it's not designed to be. So let's continue our unboxing. One thing I really liked was there wasn't a lot to unbox. With a high-end peripheral, sometimes you expect a lot of complicated cabling and connectors, but there were really just two cables, the USB cable and the power cable. The only other things that came in the box, other than the unit itself and those two cables, were the mount, and the paperwork. So let's take a look at the documentation. We have the two-year limited warranty, the safety instructions, don't throw it in the bathtub, and the quick start guide. This is actually very helpful, so let's take a closer look at it. So here we have the complete quick start guide. As you can see, it's just a few pictures and not a lot of reading, so let's go through it. So the very first thing it tells us to do is to download the PolyLens software. A lot of times with hardware, the software can be a bit of an afterthought. But in this case, I'd actually recommend downloading this first thing. There's a lot of features in there that I think you'll find helpful, so we're going to be taking a closer look at it in a few minutes. After downloading the software, the next thing I did was look at my connections. I told you before we'd be taking a closer look, so let's do that now. Starting from the far end, we have our security port. If you have this in a public place back at the office and you want to make sure it stays in the room where you put it, there's your security port. The next port over is the USB-C. That's where you use the included cable to connect it to your PC or laptop. Next port over was for power, and that was it. I just connected the USB-C cable and the power, and I was up and running. Now you're probably thinking, what's with those other two USB-A ports? What do I have to do with those? Well, the good news is you don't have to do anything with them. They're actually provided for you. In other words, the P15 is acting as a USB extender. The device comes with two free USB ports for your computer or laptop. Now, the P15 isn't the only device to offer USB ports, but I like it. It's just handy to have a few extra ports, whether it's for a dongle for your mouse, or actually, I used it to charge up my iPhone. I wanted to test it out. It worked. It's a USB port. Moving over to our next picture, we have our mount. And I was glad that they didn't make me have to go get my toolbox for any of this. Even for this, I was able to just, you can see it has one of those twisty things, so I didn't need a screwdriver. Moving on to our next picture. Okay, and let me uh, shift over here so you can see. And we've already talked about this, but this is the only two connections, the cable that came with it, the USB cable to connect to your laptop or PC, and the included power cable. And I, I should mention the power cable was very long, which is convenient because with home setups, sometimes power is a challenge. Our next slide, let's see. Okay, this is uh, mounting it. You put it on top of your monitor. Next, actually, this is worth taking a minute to discuss. When you turn the lens on the P15, it mutes your video, which is great. But not only that, it works as both a hardware and a software mute. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to record this next part uh, on my iPhone so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here's my screen recording myself, and here is the P15. Now, when I turn the lens, before it's even closed, it's muted the video. It's worked as a software mute, and then if I keep turning it, 
it's closed. And then when I open it, it opens in hardware and in software. I like to think that when they were designing it and got to this part, they were trying to decide, should it be hardware or software? And they said, hey, why not make it both? More security, why not? And our last image, let me slide over here so you can get a better look at it. You can angle the lever in the bottom of the mount if you want to point it down so it's pointed at yourself better. Pretty simple. So that's all you need to know from the hardware point of view for installation and configuration. Let's take a look at that software I was talking about before. So this is the PolyLens software. Now the first thing you'll notice, this isn't the Poly P15 software, this is the PolyLens software. If I had multiple devices here, they'd be listed. I could manage all of my Poly devices or all the ones that will be supported from this one app. Now this is supposed to be just a review of the Poly P15, but while we're here in the PolyLens software, let's take a look at some of these general area items. Now the first one, Insights, is just a simple bandwidth test, a simple internet speed test. If you're having bad calls, you want to know, is it the camera's fault or is it your internet's fault? The next one is health and wellness. And you might be thinking, why is health and wellness in a camera app? But think about it. We're going to be spending a lot of time sitting in front of our cameras, doing our work and doing our meetings. It makes sense to put something here to kind of remind us to do a few healthy habits. So let's take a look. There's three sections. The first is soundscaping. And that's basically just some soothing, relaxing background sounds. A lot of people find it's good for your mental health to have this going while you're working. So if I turn it on, we have our babbling brook. What else do we have? The gentle ocean and mountain ranch in our volume controls. Next is the hydration tab. This is a simple reminder. You can configure it however you want to remind you now and then to take a drink of water. Very good idea. And the last tab, the vision tab, it's another configurable reminder, and this is to just to remind you to look away from the screen once in a while, save your eyes. Or even better, get up and move around once in a while. Although if you think about it, if this is going to be reminding me to drink every half hour and playing sounds of a babbling book, I'm not going to need a reminder to get up and take a walk every few minutes. Okay, so let's check out the last section here, our best practices. Now to be honest, this is all really basic stuff. Uh, how to set up your headset properly, camera, lighting, um, your workstation, monitor height, those sorts of things. But actually, I think this is really helpful. Over the last year, I've been doing a lot of online production and helping people who are new to video presenting online for the first time, and I've been having to give this advice over and over again. So it's really nice to have it in this format. And while all of this is appreciated, we're really here to look at the P15. So let's check out those settings now. Our overview just shows that we're connected and on the current version. Let's get into our controls. That's where some of the fun stuff is. Now, the first thing I noticed is we have a preview area. Let's use that. Let's move me up there right now. Okay, so here I am in the preview area. And it looks like we have a few controls I can make myself. There we go, a little bit bigger. Obviously, it's great to have a preview here. So as we're adjusting our controls, we can see what we're doing. But what I really love about this, and this is going to sound strange, is the ability to turn it off. Now, why is that important to me? Well, look what it says here. Other apps can't use the camera when the preview is enabled. Let's turn it back on here. Now, to be clear, this isn't an issue with the Poly P15. That's just the way cameras work with Windows. When they're connected to an app, they only send video to that one app. And that means with other cameras that have configuration software like this, if I want to use that camera in Zoom or MS Teams or anything, I have to shut down this app. I have to shut down the configuration app so that the camera will be available. That's why I'm so excited that this one actually has this hide preview button. I can stay in this app, hide the preview, go into my call and still have my controls. I can use my app despite the fact that I'm using the camera with something else. So it may seem like a strange thing, but the hide preview button is a hit with me. Next, we have our standard brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness controls. But here's the thing, I don't want to move the slider bars to show you what they do because I'm afraid I won't get them back. It took me a long time of playing around with these to get them where I like them. Polylens software is helping me out. There's four presets here, and you can make as many as you want. I can go into this sandbox mode, and I can move around my sliders. Oh, I'm making it super bright changing around the contrast just to see what I can do. That's really bad. 
And now I don't have to worry about getting it back to where it was. I just go back to my favorite, and this is exactly where I had it set before. And we can even rename them. So I can have one, I could have one for my daytime settings if my lighting is different, and one for my nighttime settings. Next is a toggle for backlight compensation. It doesn't appear to do anything for me. I don't have any real backlight. I don't really have a way to, to get any now to test it. I'm assuming if I had bad backlighting, this would improve it somehow. Next is a toggle for on-screen display. That just puts some technical information up here. You don't have to worry about this. If your IT person wants to help you, your IT person may ask you to put this up so they can see what's going on, but most people won't have to use this. The rest of the controls on this page have to do with tracking mode. Now, tracking mode is a very cool feature. I'm a big fan of this, but I have a few minor issues with the way it's set up in the UI. First, we'll go over the good, how it works, which is what's really important, and then we'll go over my minor UI concerns. Tracking mode is something Poly developed for its big boardroom cameras. There's people, sometimes people sit on the left side of the room, sometimes they sit on the right side of the room, the back, the front, and the camera has to be able to move around and frame whoever is talking. For this application, I really think of it more as framing than tracking because most people aren't going to move around when they're using this. They're going to sit down. But people really frame themselves badly. I'm so tired of being in meetings with my friends looking up their noses or just seeing the top of their foreheads or, or, or them being too small like I am now. So let, watch what happens when I turn this on. And it might take a few seconds, but it should. There we go. That's a nice framing. If everyone was framed like this in every vi video meeting, I would be very happy. And I think for 95% of the people that use this device, this is what they'll use it for. Hopefully they'll turn this on and it'll just frame them and they'll never think about it again. But to be clear, it does track and it does it in a way that I like. It doesn't, some tracking is, is too tight on you. Like you move a little bit and it moves, that'll make people seasick. I can move a little bit and it won't do anything. But if I really adjust, let's say I lean back and I move to the side here. This isn't really a great look. If I do it for a second, it's fine, but if I'm sitting here and talking here, I really want it to eventually readjust. There we go, now I'm framed exactly like I was before. My, my face is in the same position, which is where I want everyone to be in their video meetings. This is the way we want to look in our video meetings, not up my nose, the top of my head, just right in the middle of the screen. And if I go back, again, if I go for a second, it's gonna see if I'm just moving for a second, but once it realizes that I'm here to stay, it should, after a few seconds, readjust, there we go, and put me exactly where I want to be. And I can stand up and walk all around this room and it just keeps doing the same thing. I can't remember if this feature was on by default or whether I turned it on, but I kind of hope it was on by default because I think this will improve a lot of meetings whether people know it or not. Now, as for my minor issues, I think this could be simplified a little bit. I think the entire thing should just be on or off. What I think happened is, and this is just my guess, I think the UI here was descended from the UI of one of their bigger boardroom cameras and there's a lot of features, a lot of options that we just don't need. One clue is if you look at the way to turn it on, it's not on and off, it's off and group. It makes me think that it's from a more complicated system that might have group and speaker and other modes. This only requires this one mode, so instead of having a drop down as if there's choices, it should just be a toggle, like the toggle for the backlight compensation or on, or on screen display. Just a simple toggle, tracking mode is on or off. As far as the rest of the options, the other four drop downs here, I would just get rid of them. Just because something can be configurable, just because you can offer these options, doesn't mean you need to. I think the defaults will work for 99.9% .9 of people who use the camera. I just don't see a reason to, to limit the maximum zoom from four to two, or, or to change the tracking speed, to make it slower or faster. Normal just seemed right to me. Maybe I'm wrong and you know, a bunch of customers will say, hey, David's crazy, give us these options. But I really think if the entire thing was just an on and off toggle, we'd be good to go. Okay, so let me drop out of the preview here and go back to my previous view. And let's check out the rest of our settings. Almost done here. Okay, so under our general settings, let me move over to the other side so you can see better. We have, oh, now these are some really cool features. Poly acoustic fence and poly noise block. I actually have the noise block on right now. Let's give it a quick test. And if I'm, um, I don't know how much you could hear, but I am banging away on my keyboard. Let me turn it off and try the same thing. So this is with it off. 
I actually had it on the entire time I've been recording this. And this is with it on. Hopefully there's a big difference there. And Polyacoustic Fence, I'm not really set up to demo it here, but you could look up plenty of demos on YouTube. It's amazing. Basically, it makes like a little cone around me, and if someone was standing a, a foot away from me and talking very loudly or, or you know, using machinery, uh, you wouldn't be able to hear them. It's, it's, it's an acoustic fence. It blocks the noise outside of however you set it for. And the last setting here is just the anti-flicker setting, depending on where you are geographically. The next section, it's labeled ringtones and volume, but it's really bass and treble. Just simple bass and treble adjustments for the speakers. And the last section is just a simple button to reset everything to defaults. Now while I'm here, a few other minor issues with the UI. First of all, ringtones and volume. It's not ringtones and volume, it's bass and treble. Again, my guess is this descended from the UI of another poly device, maybe an audio device where there were a lot of ringtones. They took out everything they don't need and what was left was audio and bass. That's fine, but it's time to customize this for the Polio Studio 15 and just change this to audio and bass. Or even better, they could just eliminate the categories. Now, I like categorizing things. If we have 30 features here, I would want them categorized, but we only have five. So if all we have is the two things under this and three items under here, hey, why not save us a click, get rid of the categories, and just give me all five items. Give me my acoustic fence, my anti-flicker, and then right under it, put the audio um, bass and treble, get rid of the categories, and we're done. And the last tab is our support tab with our guides and other information. And that's all I think you really need to know about the poly lens. I hope you all understand why I took so much time on it. You know, usually when I'm doing a, a camera review, I just focus on the hardware. But I really think they, they, they took the time to make this a part of it. And I think this is almost as important as the, the hardware of the camera itself. I hope you found this quick look at the Poly P15 and the Poly Lens software to be helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.